14 years ago today, the Philadelphia Eagles did the unthinkable. They traded their franchise quarterback to a division rival. And this was the biggest no-no you could have in football. You never trade a franchise quarterback to a division rival. But the Philadelphia Eagles did it. And the lessons learned need to be applied to this year's draft. King Ding back here and hope everybody's having a great day. Hope you guys are doing well. And let me just say happy Easter to each and every one of you guys. You know, speaking of Easter, 13 years ago today, the Philadelphia Eagles shocked the sports world. They shocked the NFL. They did the unthinkable. They did what everybody says you never, ever, ever do. They traded their franchise quarterback, Donovan McNabb, to the Washington Redskins. They traded him, and people went nuts. People couldn't believe what they did. Even Washington players were going on ESPN laughing at the Eagles, like Chris Cooley Cooley, laughing about the Eagles giving them their franchise quarterback. But if the Eagles never did it, Michael Vick would never have emerged as the Eagles starter. It was genius. How does this apply to today? That's the question, and we're going to get into it in a second. But before we do that, if you're new to the channel, you like the content, make sure you hit that like button. More importantly, make sure you subscribe to the most censored, most throttled, pause, pause, Eagles content creator in all of the internet. And if you've been subscribed for a while, I just want to say thank you so much for all the support you give to me. It truly, truly, truly means a lot to me. And I, I can remember, like yesterday, on, on Easter Sunday, 2010, sitting there. Watching the breaking news that the Eagles trade Donovan McNabb to Washington, a division rival, a team that had some talent around him, and they just really, like today, needed a franchise quarterback. And the Eagles were sending them their franchise quarterback. And just two years beforehand, the Eagles were in the NFC Championship game and almost beat Arizona to go to the Super Bowl. And you thought, now, nah, this team, they've got a few years left, but they had a backup in Kevin Cobb at the time that they thought maybe he would be the franchise quarterback. They actually thought he would, and they gave him like a $100 million uh, extension, and he was supposed to be the guy. We all know how that ended up. They, it, it ended up that Michael Vick came in, and Michael Vick became the franchise quarterback. And that never would have happened if Andy Reid and the Eagles did not take a chance, did not risk, did not go against the grain of what everybody tells you you're supposed to do. That's why you can't just listen to people tell you what you can and you cannot do all the time. Or it should not be this way. It's never that simple. All right. Now, for you guys, if you remember the compensation, it was, I believe the Eagles got a 2010 second round pick for Donovan McNabb, and they got a 2011 fourth round pick. The 2010 pick, the second round pick, turned into a guy we call Nate Late Allen. That's who it was. Nate Late Allen, the safety. They drafted his stunk. Okay, one of, one of the guys that drives me the most crazy uh, of all old Eagles. He just he stunk. All right, Nate Late Allen is what I used to call him. And they got him. And when the Eagles traded, uh, you know, and, and, and I think most of you guys probably remember this, but, but some of you guys who are younger may not. When they, when they made this trade, this was like, no, no, like you don't trade a franchise quarterback, your most successful franchise quarterback in history. You don't trade them away to your division rivals. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? It's a no-no, right? If there's ever a no-no in, in, in sports or in the NFL, especially that you should never do, is you should never trade a franchise quarterback who is still, who still could play, at least at the time when the Eagles traded McNabb. He was still considered one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. So instantly, Washington started getting all the hype. Instantly, Washington was the team to beat, right? Um, it, it was, it was, it, it, it rocked the world. It shocked the world. But, you know, the Eagles, they, they looked past the bullcrap. 
They looked past and they said, we're not going to be stuck and boxed into these rules of engagement. No, 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 no. We, we ain't going to do it. We're going to do what we think is best for the team. And that's what they did. And that's really when you look at the Eagles and you look, oh, we'll say, over the last 13 years. The moments the Eagles have taken chances, the moments the Eagles have gone against the grain is when they've had the most success. I mean, Michael Vick to come in, and it wasn't meant to go that way, but but if, if, if McNabb had stayed in Philly, the door for Vic never would have been open there. It just never would have. But because it was Cobb and then he got, he got his head crushed in, in week one versus Green Bay. Um, and he got concussed. I really think Cobb, when he got that hit, uh, versus Green Bay week one, that concussion, like, I don't think the dude was ever the same after that. I really don't think it. But if you guys remember, and this was a great thing, a crazy thing about that game, was the Eagles were wearing Kelly Green. They were having a throwback. It's the last time that they wore Kelly Green, and it was like the first time that they had worn it since the change. And Vic comes in, and he starts, he starts, he starts playing. He starts going off, especially with his legs. You know, it was the second season with the Eagles. The first season he came in, he wasn't ready. He wasn't in shape. You know, he, he hadn't gotten his football legs yet back. But year two, he was ready to go. And Vic was a lot more mature. He, he had learned a lot. And he was under Andy Reid. And he was, you know, he came out and he was fantastic. Uh, it was the craziest thing because I just remember going, oh, my gosh. This, this is like Randall Cunningham days. This is what it reminds me of with the Kelly Green on. And so Vic went on to, you know, to get an extension and be with the Eagles. We never won a Super Bowl out of it. But there were many good years uh, of football that we got with Michael Vick. Never would have happened if the Eagles did not take that chance. If they did not make, you know, make that move, it, it never would have happened. In 2016, the Eagles trade twice in the first round to get up to two to take Carson Wentz in 2017 Carson Wentz has an MVP season he gets hurt of course but his play with that team helped the Eagles go to the Super Bowl and win it never would have happened if the Eagles didn't do something that you don't normally do and trade up twice they did and and it worked okay um last year the Eagles go against the grain they get A.J. Brown in a trade. Most people said, and I spent a lot of time debating people, uh, that you don't trade a first-round pick or the Eagles would never trade a first-round pick and then sign a running back or, a wide, sorry, sign a wide receiver to a 20-year extension when they can just draft a wide receiver. Uh, that was the thought, but they did it. And what happened? They go back to the Super Bowl. So the times and the moments that the Eagles are aggressive, that they go off script a little bit, is the moments in time where they have the most success a lot of times. Now, not everything is always going to work out. Not everything is always going to pan out. The Eagles didn't win a Super Bowl with Michael Vick. That is true. But McNabb went to play, what, one year in Washington, went horribly wrong. Then he went to Minnesota. He just never was the same. It, it was never the same for it. It wasn't like he went to Washington and they won a bunch of Super Bowls. It didn't happen. But if you remember that day, you remember that the Eagles were the laughing stock. Everybody was like, this team's lost their mind. What is Andy Reid doing? Why would you trade a franchise quarterback to a division rival? And you didn't even get enough form. That was the thought. But they did it. And, and because of it, Michael Vick emerged as, as the franchise quarterback for several years. Many people, especially some of the younger people, will tell you that that is some of their most fondest memories when Michael Vick was the franchise quarterback. There was some really good years with Michael Vick, it did not, we did not finish it the way we wanted. But the point is this. 13 years ago today, the Eagles went against the grain. They didn't worry about what you're supposed to do or how you're supposed to do it. They didn't do something that they normally would do. It wasn't saying, you know, it didn't mean because they traded McNabb that all of a sudden they're going to just trade within the division all the time. It's still something... That is kind of frowned upon. It is still something that you don't normally do. But when opportunity strikes, you've got to take advantage of it. You really have to do. And, and a big part of it was the Eagles thought Kevin Cobb was going to be the franchise quarterback. They were wrong. But Michael Vick became. And so 
my point is this. When we're going into this draft and we're looking at this draft and what's going to happen in this draft, when you hear people say you don't ever do that because that's not how it's done, that's not what teams do, that's when the Eagles should look at it, okay? The never, you know, never draft a running back in the first round. We'll never draft, do never, never, ever draft a running back first round. That kind of talk, that kind of talk is, in my opinion, wrong. Because what that kind of talk is, to, to say never, it means that you're going to miss out on real opportunity. You can say most of the time or, or under unique circumstances, under certain circumstances, only you would take a running back first round. Situationally, like that, right? So it, it, what I'm saying is you can't be closed off to something because the narrative and what people say is... Uh, you shouldn't do it. I have moved. I have moved past that weeks ago. I still have people talking to me. Well, you don't do this because that's not what they do. That's not what teams do. You don't do that in the first round. I have moved. I'm past that because truth is, is if you're locked into that position, you could be missing out on opportunities, opportunities that can make your team great. You can't be that closed off to it. You have to say under most circumstances or only in unique situations, if there's a running back in the first round, take them. Under certain circumstances, it's worth it. And, and that's what I've been saying about Bajan Robinson the whole time. Under certain circumstances, you've got to take a chance. And it's okay to draft a running back. When you're a team that was just in the Super Bowl and you're going to plug him in immediately, he's going to be the best. He's going to improve your offense from a year ago when you just won the Super Bowl and you were already really good. You take a chance. When you have two first-round picks, when you look at the Eagles, if you get out of the mindset of never, ever do something because that's what people tell us, never, ever do it, and you start looking at opportunities and you start like just listing the reasons why something may be the perfect situation, right? If you said, all right, what are all the perfect situations to take a running back in round one? What are all the perfect situations? Like, you start listing them, there's about three or four of those things on the list that are under the Eagles blanket right now. You know what I mean? It's not like, okay, well, you were in a Super Bowl and you have a top 10 pick. So there, that's one reason. So it's an extra pick, luxury pick. Like there are three or four different things. So whether the Eagles do this or not, I, I, I've never said ever, 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 ever said the Eagles are going to take Bajan Robinson at 10. I'm never saying that they're even going to take him. I'm saying that I think they should. And I think that there's a opportunity for the Eagles to do something that would be fantastic. It would be out of left field. People would, would kind of be shocked. I don't think they would be as shocked as trading Donovan McNabb to a division rival. I think, to me, that is crazier. But they have an opportunity, in my opinion, to, to make their team take another giant step. And they have the opportunity to do it because they're in the perfect situation. If there was ever a perf more perfect situation than where the Eagles are right now to take a running back in the first round, this is it. And I'm not one that ever really talks about a running back in the first round. When Ricky Waters and the whole thing with Ricky Waters was going on, I was like, yeah, sure. If you want, they're going to draft Ricky Waters, fine. But if they're going to get a quarterback, fine. Like, I was okay with it. I wasn't really, like, on that train. You know, I really haven't asked for a running back in the first round before. But this just makes too much sense. Because if you list, if you get out of the never ever stuff and you just say, okay, under circum certain circumstances, what would it, when would it be acceptable to have a running back uh, in the first round? And you start listing those things. You're going to get more than one. You're going to start getting like two, three, four different reasons, at least, on why. The Eagles should jump on it. And I'm not saying at 10. Everybody always assumes that's 10. I'm not saying 10. You got two picks. Use it. You got a second round pick next year. You got two second round picks next year. You got plenty of ammo. You've got Howie Roseman, who is great at trades. Figure it out. But just get it done. That's all I'm saying, you know. Um, and listen, maybe it's not running back. Maybe, maybe the Eagles say... It's a cornerback. There's a lot of stuff going on with cornerbacks right now, right? You have Porter. He's coming. Uh, what, what if Christian Gonzalez is there? What about Devin Witherspoon? I just saw a mock draft where the Eagles land Witherspoon. What if they get him? That's okay. My only, and, and let me be clear about this. 
I think the Eagles should draft five. But my only real uh, demand or the real thing that I expect from the Eagles and I want, I just want them to follow their draft board. Follow and be true to your draft board. Take the best player available. If they do that, I have no issue with the pick who it is. If it's the best player on their board. That's all I want from the Eagles. Now, if you are like me, though, and you would like to find the, see the Eagles get draft five, you still have a chance to pre-order your hats. Link is in the description. Go ahead. Get them. Here it is. Finally wearing it. I love it. It's absolute beautiful hat. Fits my beautiful head beautifully. And, uh, yeah, we are going to we are gonna try to get him to Philly because we think it's the best move. We think it's the move that may not be popular but is right and opens the doors to the Eagles for greatness. That's what we think. So if you guys are with us, you want to come hang out, watch the draft live with the draft five hats on that night, now's the time to pre-order them so you can get them. Um, with that said, take care. Talk to you later, of course. Don't be a dingbat. Remember, it's how we vision. We're all just living in it. You know, it's a few weeks from the draft, and I got to tell you what, no matter what happens, I feel really good right now about, about the draft because I think Howie Roseman has something in store for us that is going to come out left field we're not going to see coming, and it's going to be the perfect move where it's going to help the team uh, be good enough and better for next year as well as help for the future. I can't wait, man. I am so excited about this draft. I really am. And, of course... We will be streaming every minute of it live all three days. So you definitely want to come hang out. Definitely want to watch. With that said, Denzel Washington out.